Hi, my name is Leah Day, and welcome to this video for the Free Motion Quilting Project. We're learning another filler design in Duchess Reigns, and this design is really kind of pushing the boundaries of what you could call a filler and what you could call thread painting. Um, basically, I'm taking cat hairball filler, which is a design that's basically just scribbling uh, in a very fast circular E shape and building that up on the surface of the quilt so much that it literally covers that area of the quilt with thread. So I'm taking areas of this quilt that are red and turning them white with white thread. It's very easy. Uh, the thing that's difficult is to watch your thread density. You can easily break your thread, and I've done it several times so far, uh, by getting things too dense. Too many layers of thread in one place will cause the thread to break as you're stitching. Uh, the other thing that's easy to do is um, to just kind of get out of control with it and your stitches get big because it's such an easy movement, your hands are going to move fast. Uh, you need to put your foot down to compensate for that so your needle is going up and down quickly to stay in balance. So I have an area of Duchess Reigns that I'm filling. It's in her uh, the breastplate area, kind of an area I'm really quilting densely with a combination of pebbling and uh, this cat hairball filler scribbling and I have to say I was extremely inspired by Cindy Needham for this particular design. I'd already designed cat hairball filler and used it in a couple different places but I had never thought to use it this dense and Cindy Needham has a wonderful craftsy class called Design It Quilt It and she is taking, she calls it scribbling, uh, taking basically stippling and stitching it on a micro scale and overlapping your lines and when I saw that and saw how she used it on her whole cloth quilts, on her whole cloth linen quilts, it was just absolutely amazing. And so from that inspiration, that's where this is coming from. That inspired me to shrink down cat hairball filler and turn it this way. And that's something that's really important um, that I really want you to understand is I take classes from other quilters. I take classes as much as I can possibly find them. And now I'm starting to take craftsy classes because they're available and there's so many wonderful teachers teaching free motion quilting. So please understand that even though I'm a teacher, I'm also a student. And at no point in time will I ever feel like I have it all figured out. There's always something out there that's inspiring, that's different, that's going to change up the game. And it's, you know, it's good to give credit where credit is good, due, and I really appreciate Cindy Needham sharing this. Uh, it was wonderful to learn from her and find this wonderful design that is going to make such an amazing impact in my quilt. So let's get started. I'm going to teach you how to do this very dense cat hairball filler. And really, technically, we could just call this thread painting. So let's get started. Basically, you can see here, I have really densely outlined quilted this space and I'm, I'm filling through this little area right here and you can see how this is going to look once I fill it completely. The outline is really nice because you really want to make sure that everything's like this is an interwoven lines. You want to make sure those are matching up pretty well and so I built up the thread so I can just really stitch this in here pretty quickly and I don't worry about stitching over the lines. So you can see all I'm doing is just stitching E shapes. The letter E in cursive and I'm just wiggling that around. It's a very, very tiny movement I'm making with my hands. And I'm building up the thread in layers. Like right here, I might go to just a back and forth line, and that's fine too. You're going to get different effects for the direction of the line. So if I did a lot of straight line quilting like this, that's going to look one way. That is really more thread painting. If I do more of a scribbling kind of cat hair ball filler look, that's going to look different too. So I'm kind of, in this quilt, I'm kind of doing a mixture of the two. It just depends on what is easy to stitch where. Depends on the space that I'm filling. I want to make sure that it's very nicely filled, that it's, you know, a matte effect of solid thread on the surface. Mostly because that's what's going to, when you put this quilt on the wall and step back from it, that's going to give it the effect of that area looking like it's actually white rather than red. I don't really want the red to show up, so I'm wiggling into all these little places and making sure I work along that line but I don't stitch over the line. It's really just a matter of control more than anything else. And working in the dead center of this quilt is a little bit challenging, but it's such a small movement 
it's not as hard as it could be. So there we go. That area is pretty much fell. I'll back up so you can see it. There you go. So that's that area and I'll probably just travel stitch down and start working down here to fill in these spaces the same way. So that's it for cat hair ball filler because red painting it up through this section. If you're really going for a very dense, very deep impact, this is the design for it. Um, contrasting your thread, this is something that I'm playing with, really taking it to the next level. Uh, and using this texture as a dynamic, you know, kind of additive to my quilt. I have all these different textures, you know, 400 plus filler designs that really have a range of density, you know, that intensity scale we were talking about in another video. Uh, some appear very light on the surface of the quilt, some appear very, very dark. And this is going to appear as the maximum intensity. So it's something to add to your toolbox and play with whenever you are needing something to really punch up your quilt and stitch it up a notch. Uh, one other quick tip that I have been doing quite a lot in this quilt because she's so big, because I'm working right in the middle and making such small fine movements, I have been using my clamps. They're hung on the wall and it's basically a bungee cord uh, that's hanging on the ceiling <laughs> to some hooks and then it's just a clamp here that all I do is have to pull it down and clamp it to the quilt back here and that will lift it up off the table. And what that does is it takes all the weight of the quilt and lifts it up higher so that that center area is easy to quilt through. I have to do a lot of repositioning of those clamps when I use them. Uh, about every inch or so of quilting I have to kind of stop anytime I reposition the quilt or rotate it around I have to take them off and reposition them but it's absolutely worth it and it's making this quilt a lot easier to, to work through. It is a challenge and I, I would be lying if I didn't tell you my shoulders are hurting from quilting as much as I have been over the last couple of days, but I wouldn't want to be quilting anything else. She's beautiful, she's fun, and I'm so happy to be sharing her with you. So that's it for this video. I really hope you'll give this a try and check out more videos on Duchess Reigns or Express Your Love on the Free Motion Quilting Project at freemotionproject.com. Until next time, let's go quilt.